Um, any questions, guys? Do you know who created beer? Well, there are several competing theories. There is the, I left my oatmeal outside, and I'm so poor that I have to have nutrition, so I just ate that and went, holy shit, I got a beer bonus. Um, there are, there is something that's called the drunken monkey hypothesis. Yeah. Um, have you, I mean, the rumor is women created beer. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah women created that. Sorry, you, I knew you were going, and I was like, I'm just gonna let them go. <laughs> so this has been a women-dominated industry. Um, Basically, the rise of industrial beer is about forcing the alewives out of their business. It used to be that a public house was your house. Why was it a public house? Because your wife was serving beer, and it would go from house to house to house. These women were so incredibly good at doing it that the guy like Guinness, Nuki, all these big boys, uh, Pilsner, Urkel, they essentially had to figure out how to get everyone who's brewing at this capacity or smaller out of the market. This is economically incredibly inefficient. They went to the extra efficiencies of figuring out how to make people from, uh, how to convince people to stop making beer at home. The myth of a witch is intimately related to forcing alewives out of this industry. The tall hat, why would you wear that tall hat? You would wear that tall hat because you'd go to the market and they'd be like, Helen's making beer today, she's wearing the silly hat. You know, the broom is a sign of cleanliness. What do you want to see? You want to see cleanliness in your brewery. There are records of alewives being sent to the stocks because the town said, you made beer. We don't like that. Sometimes they would have to sit outside their house and endure the insults of their neighbors. Other times it might be a little more severe. But this was the original Sumerian and Assyrian texts all described the tavern owner as being female and being responsible for making the correct amount of beer. This is the first thing that was regulated kind of like a currency. It was also a food product, and women were responsible for essentially kind of being bankers at the same time they were brewers and tavern owners and all these other things. You had to observe industrial standards in uh, ancient Sumer and Assyria to make sure people were getting what the government deemed to be a vital resource. Beer was a currency, it was a food, it was many things. If you were in Mesoamerica, you'd make a, a beer, kind of a beer, a fermented malt beverage called chicha. The specification was in order to make the best chicha, you had to find the prettiest women in the village. Um, Africa, Shakparo, um, you might have had that from Sprecher, um, but it's a millet based thing, and again, if you want to make good beer, find all the prettiest women in the tribe, have them chew that up, spit it into a pot, and now you can see why you want the pretty girls. Um, you don't necessarily want like toothless old, uh, you know, Betty coming her way through the, the beer, I guess. But, um, <laughs> Poor yeah, there. Uh, oh, um, Bettina Arnold is actually working on a dig. It is a Viking Viking woman of status. They know she was of status because a she had actually had glass vessels buried with her, and we're talking like seventeen, no, no, seven fifty. Um, so she had actual glass drinking vessels. She had a brewery buried with her. The residue of the beer she brewed indicated they were using drugs in addition to ethanol that you would get from the brewing process. This is relevant because we're not just talking about domestication of microbes, we're talking about a very precise pharmacology she's dealing with. Some of the bittering compounds have aspirin in them naturally. They might have caffeine, they might have other things that you want to be really precise when you mix with ethanol alcohol, right? If you've ever had four loco and went, God, that was a damn dumb idea. Pre-science, that women, those women, and other people that are brewing under these conditions in the UK, they have to balance chemistry, microbiology, and the need to deliver on a relevant social good. So that is kind of where this, this tops out. At some point, our ancestors said, it, let's get real ripped and mix aspirin with our beer, basically, and we are all going to be better for it somehow. But you look at things like bog myrtle and all these other um, ingredients that compromised. There was a period where you didn't have hops, you had root. And root is when the hedge, oh, what do I want to, hedge doctors, what's the name? root doctors, I think is one of the names for them. Uh, this is when that synthesis of traditional medicine and beer kind of begins to happen. So our ancestors were pretty clever on how to get the root. Uh, any questions? <laughs>